Welcome back everybody, this is Phil here with the Machine Learning Lab. Thanks for joining me for our crash course in machine learning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about unsupervised learning. What is unsupervised learning? Well, simply put, it's a class of algorithms that you use to find patterns in data when ground truth labels aren't known. So in other words, when we were using supervised learning, we were attempting to train a neural network to identify an image based on uh, training data where we knew what the image actually was. In unsupervised learning, this isn't always the case. However, you can still use it for continuous or discrete data. As you might imagine, this is wonderful for finding patterns in data. And typically, there's a couple of uses which are clustering and dimensionality reduction. Clustering is basically, given some data, can we find an underlying pattern such that we can group the data together. Now this is great if you're trying to segment markets using analytics. For instance, if you run an e-commerce website, you may attempt to segment your audience based on demographic and income factors, as well as finding relationships among people in social networks. Obviously, in an era when everyone is on Facebook, that is becoming increasingly important. One incredibly powerful algorithm for clustering data is something called the k-means algorithm. Here we have k groups or clusters and in our case we're just going to set k equal to 2 and your training data is x1, x2 all the way up to x of m where m is the total number of, of your training data points. The algorithm is to randomly initialize two centroids in other words a centroid is the center of a group and in this case we're going to have two of them, U1 and U2, because we have two clusters. And we're going to repeat the process of cluster assignment and moving the centroid over and over. So to uh, assign a cluster to the points, you, remember they start out unlabeled. So you compute the distance from the point to the nearest centroid. And you want to maximize, sorry, minimize that distance from the nearest centroid. In other words, the modulus squared of the distance. After you do that for all points, you'll end up with all of the points assigned to one or the other of the centroids, because they'll be closer to one or the other. And once that's done, you go through each of the points and calculate their average position and assign the centroid to that point. So if that's a little nebulous, let's go through it step by step. So here is all of our training data unlabeled. We have a red and a green X that serve as the centroids randomly assigned to the data for each of our two groups. After randomly assigning, we calculate the distance from each of these points to the centroid and assign them based on which centroid they are closest to. So here you can see that all of the points that are closest to the green X get designated green and all the points closest to the red X get designated red. Then you calculate the average position of all those points and you move the centroid to that position and then you repeat you reassign the points based on their distance from each centroid and then you repeat the process of moving the centroid and at this point we've kind of discovered that we don't get any better improvement in the mean distance from the points to the centroid. And so we're done. So we started with unlabeled data and two randomly selected points and they converge into two nice neat groups that happen to match what we started out with. Another use for unsupervised learning is something called dimensionality reduction. Sometimes you may want to compress data, in effect going from say two dimension to one dimension, or in other words, dimensional reduction. Here in this case we have a trivial example of points on a line in two dimensions, y and x, and projecting them straight down onto the x-axis. Less trivially, you can go from three dimensions where you have a helix spiral to a polar plot. And of course this generalizes to the high dimensional spaces we're used to working with in machine learning type problems. And in fact this is where it has the most utility. So the way you do this is by finding a vector onto which to project the data to minimize the error of that projection. 
And you can extend that to k dimensions by using k vectors to project. And it's important to note that you should also scale these features so that they're in the same approximate order of magnitude. You wouldn't want to do this on data where some of the points are in the order of millions and other points are on the order of 10 to the minus 6. And you use something called principal component analysis to achieve that. The algorithm for principal component analysis is pretty straightforward. You simply, um, as I said, scale your, your vectors so that they're all in the same order of magnitude, and then you compute something called the covariance matrix. It's 1 over m times the sum of i to n of the input vectors x sub i times x sub i transpose. So you're just taking the inner product. And then you solve for the eigenvectors of this covariance matrix, and you can come up with your reduction uh, matrix, and it's just proportional to all of the rows and the 1 through k column of your u matrix that you get from the singular value decomposition. And then your new vectors in the reduced dimensional space will just be u reduced transpose times your input vectors x. So basically u reduce is just a matrix of vectors that gives you projections to minimize the error. So why would you even want to use this? Well, suppose you have high dimensional data that you want to compress, perhaps for transmission. In fact, this is used in similar algorithms can be used for just compressing data in general if you want to turn something into a zip file. Or perhaps you want to find out which parameters in the data set actually matter, right? It's not always the case that every parameter you collect actually makes a difference. Sometimes, in fact, there's redundant data where one uh, one set of parameters is just a linear combination of another, right? And that's not particularly useful. It doesn't give you any new information about the system, and it's just going to confound your algorithm, increase compute time, and in general make your life miserable. And even more importantly, this is really great for visualizing higher dimensional data. In particular, in machine learning, you're always dealing with many multiple dimensions. Nothing is ever going to be a simple 1, 2, or 3D plot. And so principal component analysis gives you a great way to make this more manageable and, and give uh, plots that actually make sense to human beings. Just to quickly recap, unsupervised learning is great when you don't have ground truth labels, but you want to find relationships among your data. You can also use it to reduce the dimensionality of a system to something that is more manageable or useful to you. And something we didn't explicitly cover, but since you're able to group things it makes sense that if you're given a new point, data point, that you believe should belong to one group or the other. You can tell if it's outside of the normal distribution. In other words, it's anomalous. I hope this has been helpful. In the next uh, video, we're going to take a look at um, reinforcement learning, which is probably one of my favorite topics. It's on the cutting edge of machine learning research at the moment. I hope this has been helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, any questions, leave them in the comment box down below. Thanks. See you guys in that next video.